In this segment of TFT University, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the different methods of injecting and applying foam, whether it be Class A foam, AFFF, or the new alcohol-resistant AFFF concentrates that we've been talking about in previous segments. Biggest thing that we want to talk about here is how to make, um, let's step back for a second. There's three real terms that you need to understand when you're working with foam applications. Foam concentrate, which is what's in the container. Okay, this is the foam concentrate. We're going to add that in some metered manner, in this case either through an eductor or by batch mixing or through an onboard foam proportioning system on the truck. We're going to add this to the water in some metered amount. We will make a foam solution. Okay, so we have concentrate, solution, and then by some amount of energy, either drawing air into it or beating the stream up, the solution up as it comes out the end of the nozzle, we're going to make a finished foam. So those are three terms that you hear me refer to in this segment. Concentrate, solution, and finished foam. So in the first segment we're going to talk about here is batch mixing. Uh, batch mixing is certainly a very, very easy way of making a foam solution. You can take a measured amount of foam, mix it into a porta tank or a tank on a truck and have a measured amount of foam and a good appropriate foam solution. Remember, 3%, 1%, 6%, or if class A foam, a half of a percent would be your mix ratios. So in this case, we're going to be talking about, oh, let's say a, a 3 by 3 alcohol resistant concentrate. Okay? You can measure that uh, so many gallons into so many gallons of water to make your finished foam solution. In this case, then you can have foam literally coming from every discharge point on the fire truck's pump. So it could be run through a deck gun, through hand lines, through a portable monitor such as a blitz fire, literally any place that you want to put a foam application down. It's a very easy way of putting a lot of foam down uh, without having to have a lot of foam injection equipment. One of the other more common ones that we run into a great deal that we also sell a tremendous amount of is the TFT foam eductor. Now the TFT foam eductor, we won't get into the components and how it works or the operational characteristics of it, but it does function very much like any other foam eductor does. It has to have about a 200 PSI inlet pressure to make it operate properly. And then when doing that, you'll pick the percentage, matching the percentage up to the percentage of foam that you're picking up and it will accurately meter that foam into the water supply creating a foam solution for you. Now when working with eductors what I will tell you is we probably get more phone calls on the TFT hydraulics hotlines about making foam uh, through nozzles and so many of them come back to things like that 200 psi inlet pressure or not maintaining the eductor and keeping it flushed out or having too much hose on the discharge side of the adductor or mismatching of nozzles. There are so many key elements that you have to follow to make an adductor uh, actually work properly and accurately. Uh, so for something that's actually so simple, you know, from design standpoint with a venturi inside and a convergent and a divergent section, it's a, it's a very simple process of creating that low pressure zone, but all the other components, the operational components to go along with it make it really tough for the thing to work properly. So there is quite a process, and this process is available uh, when you can read any of our training materials on how eductors work and PowerPoint programs and the training presentations that our field staff put on. So we can certainly help you with that. So when using foam eductors, if you keep a few basic things in mind, typically you'll always be very, very successful. There are some places that foam does not work well too. And uh, from an application standpoint, as a sales professional, you need to understand how your customers are using it or not using it. So foam, especially an AFFF or an alcohol resistant AFFF, is really designed to put a foam blanket down over a fuel in depth, a puddle, a pool, of uh, flammable liquids and then that allows the chemistry in the foam to create some sort of a barrier for vaporization so that if you have no vapors, uh, if there's a source of ignition, you'll have no explosion and fire. So the pool or the fuel in depth is what we're looking at primarily. Now there's some places that foam does not work well. Certainly one is on some sort of a pressurized fuel fire like a propane tank or something like that. It's really not designed to work there. Uh, certainly, your B foams are not designed to be very effective, uh, either cost effective or environmentally effective on a class A type fire. Uh, even though they can be used for that, it's really the wrong tool for the wrong job. Also things like electrical fires. Um, an electrical fire really is something burning with an electrical source. 
foam is really mostly water, so I mean it would be no different than if you put a fog pattern of a nozzle onto some electrical source. There's going to be an issue that comes up. And the other thing is a three-dimensional type fire where fuel may be dripping down or running down or something like that. I mean this is typically where a dry powder extinguisher or a chemical extinguisher of some sort is going to be more effective in a three-dimensional type fire. So, so basic foam technology, it, there's almost a tetrahedron to make up a finished foam. You have to have water in some amount. You have to have your foam concentrate that will somehow be metered into it. There has to be air, but there also needs to be some amount of mechanical agitation. You know, this is what we refer to on our side of the world as the, the high energy and low energy delivery systems or the nozzles and the foam attachments that we have. Uh, so many of you are familiar with a lot of our products, which we'll get into in other segments of TFT University. But the foam reductor, of course, is at the core, in many cases, of making the appropriate solution. One of the tools I use a lot for training, especially on foam applications, is the TFT Pro Pack. And I know a lot of you are familiar with the Pro Pack. I'm not going to get into the nuances of it right now, but like we talked about the, uh, the adductor just previously, there is actually an adductor built in here that operates very much the same way our larger adductor does. Here's a proportioning knob on top, and it's doing basically the same function that the adductor does, or if you were to batch mix properly, or use an onboard foam proportioning system. It's doing basically the same thing, but in a very scaled down. And this is what's nice about the Pro Pack. You can teach everything you need to teach for the entire TFT product line, pretty much just in the components of the Pro Pack here. We have three sets of nozzles, and these nozzles very much correspond to the same sorts of things if we were using a full-size nozzle, a low expansion foam attachment, or one of our multi-expansion attachments, and they all kind of match up the same way. So to do some training and do a little demonstration, this is a perfect way of doing it. Now the smoothbore tip, of course, is not designed to make a lot of agitation, and if you remember, that's part of the foam tetrahedron. We have the foam solution, but to make a finished foam, we have to somehow aerate it, agitate it, uh, beat it up in some manner to create a finished bubble and stuff. So with the smoothbore, very much you're going to have reach, you're going to have tremendous penetration. You'll have the appropriate mix of foam, but you're just not going to make a lot of bubbles. Well, that's also very common to what would take place with a regular combination nozzle, whether it's automatic or selectable or fixed gallon. It's the same thing. It's designed to have great reach, good penetration, but it's really not designed, you know, even as you get out into a fog pattern, there's not a tremendous amount of agitation or aeration that takes place. Now, certainly, you can aim it at the ground just as we can do with this and bounce it and aerate it a little bit more, but the nozzle itself is not designed to introduce a lot of turbulence or agitation. It's designed to have a good reach, good penetration, and a great straight stream. Now, the low expansion tip, when added to the Pro Pack, as you can see, has some holes in it, so it is allowing air to be entrained into the solution as it comes through. And of course, with the tube here, there's a tremendous amount more of, of bouncing around and agitation and aeration that's going to take place. So, very much like this tube is designed, this is virtually the same thing that you would have with a low expansion foam attachment that would just go on the end of the nozzle here. The, the performance that you see, the style, the quality of foam in the reach, it's very, very typical of exactly the same thing. So as you can imagine, you're not going to have the reach and penetration that you would have with just the straight stream, but at the same time, you're going to have a lot more aeration of foam. So while you give up some reach and penetration, you'll have the ability to kick up the expansion. Much wetter, a uh, little bit thicker foam. Uh, we often will use the term expansion ratio. The expansion ratio is kicked up. We have many more bubbles. We're aerating a lot more air in to it. So the same goes here. Now we have, you notice there's a lot more screen, there's a lot more things inside to, to agitate, to aerate, to create turbulence, to create restriction, to allow air to be drawn into the stream. So as you can imagine here with this type tip, or in the case here of the multi-expansion tip that would be attached to the end of any nozzle, again you can see the screening inside, there's a lot of stuff to really beat it up tremendous opening to add air into it. So in this case, just like with our MX attachments here, the medium expansion attachment here, you're going to give up a tremendous amount of reach and penetration, but what you will gain is a tremendous amount of bubble creation. So while your reach may only be three or four feet, your expansion ratio may be two to one here, four or five to one here, may jump up to 20 to one here. So you're gonna have a tremendous amount of bubbles being created. So really the same concept that we use with the Pro Pack in teaching and showing how the foam is being made, you can translate to exactly the same thing here to working with the nozzles. So again, any nozzle, whether it be a fixed, selectable, um, or an automatic, 
they operate pretty much the same way where you're going to have reach and penetration. The low expansion tip, you'll keep some reach, a little bit of penetration, but you're going to make a lot more bubbles. And the multi-expansion tip, again, you'll lose a lot of that reach, but you're going to make huge, huge volumes of bubbles. Now, one of the terms that you'll hear us use in future sessions with TFT University is multi-expansion. And the reason this has the term multi-expansion is because when attached to the end of one of our nozzles in straight stream, it blows pretty much through it very quickly, so you keep some reach, you have good penetration of the stream, and then as you change the fog pattern back and the stream widens out, it hits the screen more, you give up that reach and penetration, but you get a tremendous amount of foam coming through it. So the term multi-expansion often will be used here. So again, we'll put my little tool away here real quick, my little pro pack. Perfect training tool and the perfect tool for making small quantities of foam for motor vehicle accidents. Some of the other little tricks and tools that we have in our foam application arsenal include also the bubble cup, which you remember. Some of you may not have seen this. This is the quadra cup. We've taken the bubble cup concept of the head that pops out and creates a low expansion foam along with the selectable gallonage body of our quadrifog series. So now we have a selectable gallonage tip that can be used and matched up to our eductor series that offers the benefit of being a regular water combination nozzle, but also has the ability without a foam attachment of creating a low expansion type foam. As we get into bigger applications, as I mentioned uh, in previous segments, a lot of interest in ethanol and flammable liquids has taken place. Sometimes there's reasons for a larger application. This is TFT's master foam nozzle. And you see very quickly, it has a foam injection port in the side. There'll be a metering disc that goes in here. And then also, really what this is, it's an eductor that's actually been integrated and built into the master stream itself. So it will draw the foam in, act just like an eductor, but much higher flows, 350, 500, or 750 gallons a minute. Now, everything we've talked about so far, including the Pro Pack, is pretty much what we call a low energy delivery system. We're taking advantage of the pressure and the water volume and the flow through the hose line and using up some of that energy as it comes down the hose line to agitate and aerate the foam. We also have a full line of what we call compressed air foam nozzles or CAFS force. Now the CAFS force nozzle we'll refer to often as a high energy delivery system. The reason for that is a lot of the energy is being added back in at the fire truck in the form of an air compressor, which is either driven with a separate engine of some sort or through a PTO drive off the truck itself. A little bit different operations, a little bit different hose handling characteristics. These are things that we won't get into in this series. But we just want you to be aware that there are nozzles designed specifically for these high energy delivery systems. Often it's recommended that the use of a smooth bore, in this case our VIT series, which has insertable um, different orifice sizes from uh, 7 8 15 16 inch or inch and an eighth can be put in, or just the open bore itself can be used, which is an inch and 3 8 bore by itself. These are often matched up to nozzles, much as this CAFS force, which is a derivative of a nozzle we designed and developed for the Phoenix Fire Department for their operations with foam which really allow you to operate in a water mode at about 75 PSI or a compressed air foam that runs at about 40 to 45 PSI. Again, creating very little restriction for the foam coming out and allowing you to have a much drier type foam. So anyhow, these low energy delivery systems that we have around here or the high energy delivery system are all part of TFT's, uh, really our entire product line of foam stuff. Every nozzle has both low expansion and foam, uh, excuse me, low expansion and multi-expansion foam attachments that fit on it, all the way from our smallest twister all the way up to the master foam. And I even have one of those. They get very large at some point as well, but they're all designed to make foam and have some sort of a measured performance that gives you both reach as well as a, a higher expansion ratio of the foam and stuff. So, all I can stress to you from whether it's injecting foam, pre-mixing foam, or doing anything else, training is a key component for all your fire department customers. If they're going to get involved in doing some foam training, you often can help them, allowing them to test and uh, maybe test drive some of this equipment and get out and see how it works. Our regional staff can work with you in developing a program where they can come in and help teach foam programs. Uh, we can even get into things on different operational characteristics on how to lay foam in at certain applications and stuff. So anyhow, 
I can't stress enough that training with foam is one of the things that will help you be successful. The more you as a sales professional know about foam applications, often the better prepared you are when you come in the front door with the fire department. So if you have questions on foam and foam applications, please let us know. We have tremendous tools for you in PowerPoint training programs, our slide chart that we use a lot for uh, uh, different training programs and stuff. And uh, please let us know we're there to help you. Uh, and TFT uh, University is here to make your job a little bit easier when you're making those sales calls.